It was supposed to be the year of police reform in Maryland. Events across the country, including Ferguson, Missouri, and here at home, appeared to present the right coalescence of timing and public interest to tackle a subject that on the surface appears a natural fit for the state that touts itself as decidedly liberal. But then reality descended in Annapolis, and now the prospect for change seems remote. All the measures aimed at holding police accountable, from an overhaul to the Law Enforcement Officers Bill of Rights, to a series of proposals to make it easier to fire police convicted of crimes, have died without a vote. It's a troubling development for advocates who hoped this would be the year of change. One of them, Davon Love, policy director for the Leaders of a Beautiful Struggle, says the roadblocks to reform in the state are daunting. So to me, it's demonstrative of the fact that black lives don't matter here in the state of Maryland. But it appears efforts to hold police accountable might actually be getting more difficult, not less. Last week, the Maryland Court of Appeals struck down an $11.5 million verdict award to the family of Manuel Espina, who was unarmed when he was shot and killed by police in 2008. Even though a Prince George's County jury found the officer acted with malice when he shot Espina, the high court ruled in favor of the so-called municipal caps, which limit damages against municipalities to $200,000 per person. It's a ruling veteran defense attorney A. Dwight Pettit says ignores the law. And we have argued, and I think the law is quite clear, uh, that you cannot cap a constitutional claim, be that constitutional claim through the Maryland State Constitution or through the U.S. Constitution. He, too, is challenging a similar case of police misconduct. His client was 15 years old when city police took him from his West Baltimore neighborhood and dropped him off in Howard County, shoeless. Pettit sued and prevailed during a jury trial, but this time the city has simply refused to pay. His concern, cities have too little incentive to weed out bad cops if verdicts are set aside or capped. So the police officer is not exposed to monetary damages and they're not exposed to criminal sanctions. So what is the sanction or what is the, the penalty to get the police uh, departments or the police individual police officers uh, to get their attention? There is not. The trends in Maryland seem at odds with national sentiment to address aggressive policing, particularly in minority communities. The city of Los Angeles recently impaneled a citizen oversight board to watch its scandal plague sheriff's department. And in 2014, Wisconsin enacted a law that requires investigations of police shootings to be conducted by an outside agency. But here in Maryland, advocates for police say reform is not necessary. Uh, what I find funny about the Law Enforcement Officers Bill of Rights is that from a, law, from a rank and file standpoint and a management standpoint, um, on both sides of that equation, we both feel that the process works. Early this year, we caught up with Vince Canales, the president of the Maryland Police Union, which represents officers who work in departments across the state. He says police departments already have the tools they need to keep officers in line. And I think once people understand that there are a number of levels of review in this process, I think that they'll under, they, I, I believe then some of the issues and concerns that do exist will be removed. For Love, he's already planning to mount new efforts next year. His hope that the state, which is allegedly one of the most liberal, actually acts the part. The biggest impediment has been the rhetoric around people who are interested in police reform being anti-law enforcement. And so a part of what we're going to try to do over the next year is to help fight back against that mythology around this whole anti-law enforcement uh, mantra. Stephen Janis, reporting from Baltimore for The Real News Network.